I am here today to demonstrate for you um, how to use the JLM Diesel Intake Extreme Clean. It's a two-step process which will clean up combustion, air to intake and um, sticky turbo vanes etc. So um, we're going to show you how to use the tool because there are a few important things um, to take note of when using the equipment. So we'll pop that there for now. First of all, you need to wear some gloves and eye protection for using this uh, treatment. Um, check all your, your levels first before you start is important. We've already done this on the vehicle. So we want to keep the video a little bit shorter so you can see the important stuff. So engine oil is good, um, coolant is good, so everything's fine there. So before we apply the, the, the first solution, we've removed on this BMW here, nice and easy one, we've already removed the intercooler pipe. So it's important that you don't go in via the air filter or MAF sensor you must go in after the intercooler. This will avoid any pooling of chemicals in the intercooler that, that may cause running away or an engine hydraulic, etc. So move the intercooler pipe and go straight onto the intake. If this is extremely badly carboned up, then you should use the JLM EGR cleaner in here um, to take up take off the excess dirt before you start. So excess carbon buildup. This one's actually not too badly choked, so we're gonna go straight in with this, this process. Before we start, we will pull the vacuum pipe off the EGR valve. Now, the reason for this is if the EGR is sitting open, then you will not have a full venturi effect there and uh, to, to secure the tool into place. So, we disconnect the EGR. If your EGR is sticking open excessively, then you clean with the JLM. EGR cleaner or you could also increase engine RPM by up to 50 RPM if you find that you struggle to get suction here so next thing we'll do is we take the, the tool and we've got we've got the disc here there's also another adapter for larger intakes but this one will be about right for this BMW so you know, the suction of the engine will hold it in place and that's perfectly fine so like I say if, if the EGR was sticking open you may struggle for suction so what we'll do is we place this over the intake. Engine's fully warm. It's up to operating temperature. So that's the tool connected and that's going nowhere. So now that this is in place, what we'll do is we'll show you step one. So we'll give the chemical a good shake. We'll pop it there for now. So we'll pour the step one fluid into the two. Okay. So we'll now reattach the canister for the intake Extreme Clean Toolkit Pro. So we'll connect this back up. Make sure it has a nice firm seal on there. And then let's reattach the airline. The pressure is already regulated on the tool, so you don't need to worry about excess pressure there. It's already regulated. The tap has been switched off here, so we'll now turn the tap to the on position. Now, we've opened this, but the small valve on the end is still closed off at the moment. And what we're looking for is we just slowly open this. And you'll see we've made two marks on here. So what you need to do is make these marks 12 centimetres apart, and we need to count... And the, the flow rate that we're looking for on this 
is very very slow no more than 10 seconds so you want the fluid to be taken 10 seconds to cover this distance of 12 centimeters um, you don't want it to go any faster than that so as you can see there very slow process that's what we want it's on idle it's nice and safe so we'll allow this to go through for the next 25 minutes or so till all the fluid is in and then we'll come back and we'll show you the next stage of the process okay as you can see now the pipes clear so all of the step one um, is, is through the end of the intake now so we'll close off the valve on the end and shut off the air supply disconnect this ready and what we'll do now is we're going to turn the engine off and we're going to wait five to ten minutes i would recommend if it's been extremely carboned up leaving it ten minutes if it's fairly clean then five minutes is okay so we'll be back soon to do the step two okay we've now allowed the engine to to settle now for ten minutes we'll switch the engine off we've allowed it to soak for ten minutes so we're now going to proceed with step two um so it's clear difference there you can see step two flush fluid diesel intake extreme clean so we'll give it a good shake first before we start um ready obviously airline off close valve off ready everything's closed off And on this step, it's a different fluid, but you're following the same procedure. So um, there's a little bit more of this stuff. So when it goes in, we're going to follow the same procedure with the engine running and um, on idle. And we'll be going for the same 12 centimeters along the pipe every 10 seconds. So it's just um, following the same procedure. But it's best to close off the valve and set your flow from scratch, you know. So, in the instructions, you will notice um, that it says you may need to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. That's only on, a, on, on very odd few vehicles, on certain makes and models. When you disconnect the intake pipe, you will have no airflow over the flow meter and it will cause the vehicle to non-start. So, if that was the case, right back at the beginning, you would simply unplug the mass airflow meter that's the reason for it so uh the salt would cover that while we're doing the video um it's not necessarily unless you have a vehicle that requires um a math signal to start so screw the canister back on again give it a good nip to make sure it has a good seal there and again we'll reattach the airline and then what we're going to do is just going to start the engine so here we have the engine on idle same again we'll put the disc over the intake again there you go make sure you've got a nice good fit we'll know that that size is okay because we've already used it in step one so again we've made our marks 12 centimeters apart You will still get a little bit of residual fluid from the previous one in there, but it's fine. So, again, nice and slowly. When it comes past here, we want to be around 10 seconds, approximately. So we're about right there. So I'll count about 10 seconds. So, same as before, all we'll do now is we'll leave the vehicle idling and this will take around 30 to 35 minutes. Nice slow process. Um, we, we recommend keep checking back on your flow once it's stabilised because you may need to tweak it a little bit. Um, so, once all the stages run through, we will close off the valve, we'll disconnect the airline and we will allow the, the vehicle to run for a further 10 minutes before reattaching the, the intake pipe and going for a road test. But we'll come back at the end of that um, stage 
and um, tell you what we'll do next. So we'll be back soon. Okay, so we're back to this now. As you can see, the step to the pipe is now clear. So it's all run through there now. So what we're going to do now is close off. Close off the valve. And we're going to switch the tool off. But we're now going to allow the vehicle to run on idle for a further 10 minutes. Uh, before going out on road test. We're also going to add before road test we're going to add some of the JLM diesel fuel system cleaner into the fuel tank and that'll help clean out injectors um, and we also recommend so what we'll do is after we're back from road test we will we will change the engine oil filter but we recommend if we're doing this treatment to, to clean up carbon deposits it's good to use the JLM engine oil flush as well uh, before changing the oil and obviously it's important to make sure you get the correct grade of oil and a nice high quality grade of oil like the, the JLM engine oil range so if you can get one of them use a nice quality engine oil so we'll leave this here on road test what we need to do is we need to go for around 10 kilometers or 6 miles on the initial part of the road test we need to drive the vehicle at low RPM so for doing 6 miles 10 kilometers so you want to go first 2 miles at low RPM then medium part of the road test go to mid range RPM so uh, 2 to 3000 RPM and then on the final part of the road test take the vehicle up to higher RPM to really clean them carbon deposits out so once we've done that we'll come back recheck for any fault codes that may have appeared from having the boost pipe off or mask sensor off um, clear down your fault codes change your oil engine oil and that's it job done